that's how you know we're going. Yep. So after the workout, when I was done my workout today, I was uh, I knew we were going to be talking about um, a little bit about uh, things that bother me in hockey, and some of it's the parents. Um, but uh, so I was just kind of brushing up on some of my notes that I was going to make for today, and um, I was talking to Prouder in the in the office when he was done his workout about how his dad was as a um, as a as a hockey parent. So he was talking a little bit about that, and but I w- as I was doing that, I was listening to a uh, podcast. So uh, a good friend of mine, Ian Pulver, has a, uh, it's called the Hockey News Storytellers. And uh, he's got some really good, good things on there. But it led me to another one of Chris Stewart and um, Wayne Simmons, who plays for the Leafs now. So they're both black guys that grew up in Toronto. And uh, it was a really interesting story because, like, first of all, when we look at uh, hockey parents, uh, we see extremes. And we see people that think that they have to make every every decision uh every decision has to be right and uh the setup moves and try to uh set their kids up for success and are very 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 involved so it was funny to watch the extreme today so you got two guys from uh, toronto so listen to this this is it's it's really cool it was just a short little clip so who is who is talking for this one this was uh chris stewart Hmm. He play, his, his, him and his brother Anthony played in the NHL. Yeah. Just recently yeah, retired. I remember Chris yeah. Wayne Simmons. Oh, Wayne Simmons. Yeah, played with Prouder a little bit yep. or whatever. Um, so Wayne, uh, let me. Where's Stewart? Uh, Chris Stewart quit hockey for two years at fourteen. Made the NHL. His quit because of, he he thought he was a bigger kid. He went and played football for two years. His brother already moved away, playing hockey. There are nine kids. Nine or seven? Seven kids. In his family, there was nine kids? Seven kids. kids. Seven kids. A brother, five sisters, and him. Holy cow. Living in a small place. They, uh, he, he looked and he said, well, I can play high school football. I'm a bigger kid, so I'll just get out of hockey and save my money, my parents some money. Mm-hmm. So that's what he did. He, um, and then, so he gets dropped. He plays in the NHL for a whole bunch of years. Quit for two years. Yeah. Prime lived, time when he's 14. Yeah. Lived in shelters. Like, as parents, they'd even bring people in. Like, they're good people, right? So, hard life. Didn't play, played, I think, major midget. But they grew up, like, in, in um, like, playing, play like, A-level hockey. Mm. So, they did the, the parents and him didn't make all the correct moves. As people, My point of that is people think you have to make all the right moves all the right time. And one thing goes wrong. You don't make the right person. Hockey's over. Wayne Simmons, still playing. I'm just trying to find his note. Uh, he didn't play AAA hockey until major midget, second year major midget. Then he went to Owen Sound. Um, his attitude was because they were poor, and his quote was, um, "I have to make it. <coughs> I have to make it so my family could have a better life. I have to make it." And uh, he said he was living in uh, this, this small house with no electricity. And uh, he just made a decision, I have to make this thing. So w- my point of saying that stuff was is that we, we, we try to make all the right decisions, but and, and this is for the parent side. Parents try to make all the right decisions, and of course it's good, it's good to make intelligent decisions. Like there's, make no mistake. But what I, like we always say, it's like the parents aren't going to make it. The kids are. Mm-hmm. If you have a big enough why... Or if you're gonna if you're gonna do it, the kids are gonna do it. The players are gonna do it. Yeah. So that's that was my point of uh, bringing that up here today because I think as hockey parents we get too involved in the things that you have it makes it makes no difference. Yeah. Well, on a side note on that too, you're talking about the, the story of those two guys. Um, another like good lesson to, that you can take out of that is there isn't a recipe, right? There's not one way to get where you want to go there isn't when you talk about you know you do all the right things and and whatever all the right things isn't really defined very well right yeah. because everyone has their own path everyone got there a different way no one guy's story is the same the only thing you can really do is you try to do the right things to increase your chances of making it because if you do the right things you're more likely to make it or whatever but i was i was talking to my my sister actually about this um a little while back, my, I know my parents talked to her all the time because she's in Toronto right now. She's a singer yep. and she's trying to make it a, as an artist, which is on on parallel with you know trying to be a hockey player or whatever. Yeah. And you know she she gets upset sometimes when she's especially now because she can't really sing or do anything. But that's exactly what she says. Like, oh, I feel like uh, you know this isn't working, and she's kind of waiting for 
you know, somebody to do something for her, or the right break to to hit her, or she thinks she needs to be doing these certain things because other people did them or someone told her to. And there just there isn't <clears throat> there isn't a, a right path. There isn't one way to do anything, right? And yeah. so if you're not doing things just because you want to do them or because you love to do them, the, the chances of you making it are so slim already yeah. that there's no point trying to you know trying to do like copy what somebody else did because the likelihood that it works for you is just not very high. So that on top of the the parents perspective that you're talking about, I just want to point yeah. point to that too. Yeah, no, for sure. Um, I, so I was asking Prouder. <laughs> When he came into the office, as, as I was listening to that, and I just wanted to get his perspective again, although I've heard his story a few times. I said, Proto, tell me about your uh, dad. How was he when you grew up playing hockey? And he said, honestly, coached a little bit because he was a, just a local guy playing local hockey. And then when he went to AAA, no one else took the team, so he coached one or two years. But he said he never said a whole lot. He said, but, he said when he was in, uh, I think it was Major Bantam. Um, yeah, I think it was Major Bantam minor major peewee something like that the, he had coaches and different coaches and uh, his dad said one thing to him and he said uh i just don't i think you're just not playing as much like as well as you can like there's something missing he didn't give him any feedback uh he says but that's probably the only coaching he got from him that one day and he said that one thing that he said it left him okay what does he mean by that like am i not working hard but the point that he made is that it, it kept him searching, okay, what am I doing? What can I do to get better? So he didn't overcoach. Point is he didn't overcoach his kid or over tell him anything. In fact, he said, like, if you don't give your best effort, like, just let me know because I got other things that I can do, drive him to the rink and stuff like that. But he went searching for the, okay, my dad said I'm not, I could. there's more there, more in the tank. Mm -hmm. So I was sharing a story with him, and I did the same thing with my son. Would have been... Uh, He's minor midget now, minor Bantam, major Bantam, major Bantam. Yeah, he's major, major Bantam. I think, well, yeah, I, remember, I think I remember you telling me this last year, I think. Yeah, he was, he was playing great, great hockey, really good hockey. And uh, But I, as a hockey player and as a coach, I know that I know when there's a level missing. And uh, I don't don't say a whole lot, though. So he uh, was talking about how well he was playing and stuff, and I said, yeah. And I said, yeah. So he said, well, w is there something? I said, yeah, there's just like, honestly, Chooch, it's it's there's a there's something there's a gear that you're not getting like so if you if you're playing on a like I said if you can just get wrap your mindset around a two one game a three two game a two two game there's a different level of um, energy that you bring to the ice and it's like you want the game you want it to be on the ice you put the game on your shoulders and you want to dominate and you'll do whatever it can or you're killing a penalty and it's like why is it when it, when people kill a penalty they're get, they're and they're, it, when it means something the the level of play goes up that much higher. I said, you know what I mean? And he's like, yeah, I think I do. I said, well, whatever. Find that gear. If you can find that gear and not just do it when it, when the game's really important or last minute or whatever, if you can do it, if you can find that gear for every shift, I said, that's that's how you're going to dominate hockey. And uh, it's and he, he found that. And it's like when he was playing up to that point, he was uh, playing, getting his points, doing his hits, whatever. But it was like, you know that level. There's just oh, a yeah. different level. Yeah. Yeah, you can tell. And this is, of course, because he asked. And this is, of course, because he wants to go somewhere in hockey. So I was giving him feedback on what what my observations w were. And, and I, I just kind of said, like, when you're out there, you have to do little things. And you, you if you want to get noticed, that level has to be there to get to the next level. So... Um, that's about the, like the majority of the coaching, like, and it was a turning point for him, to be honest with you, just like it was for Dalton. Not a lot, but it was something to say, okay, you're good, but you could be a lot better if go find it yeah. kind of thing. So that was, um, that was kind of turning points. Yeah. I think, uh, well, just from seeing how you interact with Charlie and, and, uh, even though some of like the other parents that are, that are coming around the gym, like I, the, the, the nice thing for you is I know you don't say much to Charlie because I, I see that you don't say a lot to Charlie, but right. when he asks, you give him feedback in some way, right? And it's not too much. It's not too little, but a lot of people, like I know for like Prouder's dad, he doesn't really know hockey, right? right? Limited. And a lot of parents really don't know hockey despite, you know, what they might think. Yeah. And so there's, there's, you know, something to be said, especially when your kid comes to you asking for, because kids don't know. We talked about this earlier. Like, when I was a kid growing up, like my dad knew everything. Like my dad had all the answers. Like that's where I'm going to learn from. Like he is going to teach me hockey. He's going to do all this stuff. Well, my, my dad never played 
organized hockey until he started playing like rec league when he was in his thirties or something. Right. So is that the best source to be learning hockey from? Probably not. Probably not. You know, and a lot of parents will find themselves in that same position. And what I find funny is the, the amount of advice that parents are giving when they don't have really any, any knowledge. Like the, the thing I notice is the parents that have played at some reasonably high level Normally, don't really say a lot. Normally, yeah, th- but there, but but then I was, uh, it's surprising. I'm actually I'm surprised at some people that actually I've got some friends that are NHL players, and they're Looney Tunes with their kids. They think because and, and I understand to a degree they know what it takes, so they expect that from their kids. But they should also know that they did it, not their parents made them do it. Yeah. So and I I haven't seen it go. Um, I haven't seen positive results very often with that. Yeah. But yeah, you're right. Most people that haven't played give the most advice, and most people that have been around the game understand that it's a fun game, and that if you're fortunate enough to have some talent and some commitment and willing to do things that other people aren't willing to do, you have a better chance. Oh, but yeah. it's got to be the kid that does it. Well, yeah. So well, so regardless of whether you played or not, it's just the the we see it here all the time. Like yeah. if if your kid is eight, you know, ten, twelve, and you're you know off your rocker about his hockey and you're at every skate like there's some mornings here like not right now because no one's allowed to skate uh, in Ontario right now but in the morning like sometimes we're here super early and then some of the kids would have their morning skate before school like a private yeah. skill session and the front row there's maybe five kids on the ice and mom and dad of each kid are in the front row watching yeah. it's seven o'clock in the morning yeah your kid is eight years old nine years old you know what I mean and I'm not saying like the kid shouldn't practice and you shouldn't invest in your kid to develop and all this stuff, but there comes a point where like when is when is enough enough kind of thing, right? It's gone so far, like it's gone so far the other way, and I don't know what it is. Like it, these are legit questions that I have. It's like I'm gonna go through a few things that, from parenting aspect, like I actually would like to get answers, um, but I don't understand like when should you start taking private lessons for hockey? And I, I can pretty much guarantee it's not eight or seven or nine. Yeah. I can pretty much guarantee that. Actually, I know that because, like, first of all, the, the kid doesn't know if he wants to be a hockey player. Of course, if you say, hey, you want to get up early and skate, they're going to say, yeah. Every kid's going to say that. Most kids, anyways, yeah. that play hockey. Um, are you making them a better hockey player? Like, if if you do, it's so minimal. Like you might get a head start a little bit when you're young, but like really, it, it makes it, it baffles me. But yeah, for parents, so the 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 true picture that you just painted is because most people most people will say things like, "I just want them to have fun." Um, oh, if they see a little bit of talent, oh, you know, it'd be nice if we can get their uh, college or their school paid for. Okay, cool. Um, I know he's not going to make the NHL. Uh, all right. But actions speak a lot louder than your words. Oh, yeah. And if you have both parents coming out at 6 or 7 o'clock in the morning to watch a skills session, I think the intent of watching, there's a different reason for that. And it's not just to watch your kid play. Because yeah. it's 7 in the morning doing skills stuff. I think there's like, I think, oh, I've seen it. It's it's like, d- did they work hard? Are they... Um, are they learn like there's a whole bunch of questions that make me go wow you're here and there's one couple they bring the grandfather comes too yeah it's like I don't and I'm not I just don't understand it I it's it's gone it's so far away from what I it's so far away from what I I've seen growing up and um, what I believe in like I like you know I don't like to take um, customers on a private setting until they're actually hockey players where they actually pretty close to getting somewhere now i hey listen i understand someone getting extra ice to maybe learn a couple of specific skills but i mean at eight you don't know because you're trying to learn and there's a principle of t- of learning that um you have to l- you have to learn on your own a little bit so the the problem that happens at eight years old or you know young young people doing uh private lessons or really small group lessons like the extra ice with someone always instructing it's actually counterproductive because if you take a kid on the ice, like when they're young and they're trying to learn, they're trying to learn a skill. They're just trying to have fun. Like they, they can't process the information. So it'd be like if I was to start piano today, which I'm not, 
<laughs> but if I was to start piano today and, you know, for the first month or two, I start tickling the ivories a little bit and I learn A, B, whatever the notes are. Yeah. And, and I'm trying to learn chopsticks or whatever. And I, uh, is that a thing? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so I'm trying to learn, I'm trying to learn it. Okay. So what I'm trying to do, all my focus is just, okay, what, which one is A? Which one is B, minor, whatever? Yeah. And it's like a extreme, extreme focus. Yeah. The worst thing that could happen at this point is someone over my shoulder. Okay, A, and then you got to go to B, and then make sure your head's up and make sure you, you that pedal at the bottom of the piano you got to press to, and it should be your index. Right now, your 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 mind's exploding. Yeah. And that's actually what happens in hockey is what they're actually doing at a young age is there. It should be fun number one. Um, that's where your skill development's going to come from, not from someone teaching you. Honest to God. Um. Number two is what I say. The uh, number one's got to be fun. Number two, it's got to be learned on their own. They're not going to master things. They're not. They're going. They're going to. They're going to have fun. They're going to get better by default, whether you have an instructor or if you don't. And that extra hour or two of uh, private lessons is is totally counterproductive. And you don't know where they're going to be in two years, three years. Yep. It's funny. I just had. My wife was telling me this, this. This is just one of many stories, but I just had my wife tell me last week or the week before about uh, she got a call. Do you know this person? Uh, and she asked me, and I said no. They said, "Oh, okay," because they're playing wherever they're playing, and they're seven or eight, and they're playing like in your local center, not the AAA. So seven or eight, and the parents want to get them moved up to AAA next year because he just can't play at that level anymore. And it's like, man, like. And I, I went through it with my son and my my wife. Like, how many players every year start off and at young guys, and they're they, they actually look like they're going to be really good hockey players, and then it's just gone. Yeah. And I, I, it's just gone. It's just gone. Yeah. And it's there's, there's no rush to go anywhere. Yeah. Well, the, the, I mean, a couple of things that that I think I don't want to go get outside my lane here because I'm not a um, early childhood educator or anything, but yeah. I know, I think I know at least that. Uh, Kids mostly learn by doing, and yep. they pick things up really easily. So um, I'm pretty sure this is accurate. If They, they kind of do copycats. So when your kids are young, they look at mom and dad. What are mom and dad doing? I'm going to try to do that, right? You're trying to teach a kid how to eat, how does he use the spoon, how does he whatever. He looks at other people doing it. You can tell him as much as you want. Yep. You need to put the spoon to your mouth. You need yep. to put the spoon. Okay, but until they actually do it and figure out that pattern, yep. they're, they're not going to be able to do it no matter how much you tell them, right? Yeah. So there's a point where... You, you overwhelm the system. And like one of the things that, that I notice even in the gym, so I teach uh, one of the, or well, it's, I guess it's grade school and high school. Yeah. Um, and the youngest group that I have are grade sevens, which would be like 12 or so. Yeah. And normally like I'm working with kids that are athletes, right? Kids that they have a natural, they have an inclination for moving athletically, yeah. right? They know how to do it yeah. to some degree. So if I tell a kid that is just starting to work out that is a hockey player, hey, you got to make sure you keep your back straight. A lot of them already know how to do that. And I don't have to explain to them the mechanics of how to keep your back straight, right? Yeah. But for this group in particular, it's um, these guys aren't athletes, right? They're just kids in grade school, yeah. right? Most of them aren't athletes. That's yeah. just like any school. Yeah. So <clears throat> you can't give them, you can't give them too much information because like you just said, talking about learning how to play the piano, it's you're, you're just trying to focus on the first thing the person said. Okay, here's the A note. Okay, I don't know where that is off by heart yet. So for me to hit that note every time, I have to focus on it. It'll take a minute. Yeah, right? So one of the issues I was running into, and this is something that I see a lot with parents too, like that think they're helping, is a couple of the teachers that come in and help help out. Like I'm the trainer and they do like the supervising and the extra pair of hands to help out and whatever. And they're going around and trying to help correct some of these kids. And sometimes it's not even the right correction. So that's one thing, which is um, not helpful. But the other thing is if you're, if you're 12 and you're just learning how to, how to bend properly, I can't tell you this is where your feet go. This is how you keep your back straight. This is where your hand should be. Your head should be looking here. You've got to make sure your neck is straight. You might make sure you breathe. Pro like there's too much. There's Way too, too much, much. Too much. Right. You give them one thing. Let them let it marinate for a bit. Let them figure it out how to do that thing, and then you come back and and you're not being a bad teacher by not correcting everything at once. You're actually being a good teacher, right? Yeah, because people have to figure things out. Yeah, they got to figure things out, right? So you look at and you look at some of these parents, and they're just like throwing the book at their kid. Yeah, you know, it's like your kid is 10, 12, whatever. Like he can't do everything. He's just a kid. He needs time. 
He needs time to build the skill. And before he can do that, you're going to make him hate you and hate hockey. And like, it just looks like you, like you just want it more than your kid does. Right. Yeah. And I don't know if that's actually what it is. Like this is, these are my questions about like parenting and hockey. It's, it's, it, it blows my mind to watch like what you would consider common sense people turn like flip a switch i mean you got someone that's a, a doctor or a successful business person and stuff and they just you know they have some common sense a really good brain it's like they they turn it like i don't know what it is is it are we overprotecting our kids or do we we want them to succeed is it our ego that makes us happy like is it if they make it or do something well is that my ego now cuz i know for my kid it's not it's yeah you know it's well yeah wow. i think but i think that's right but the, a lot, I think a lot of it too is that kind of living vicariously through kind of thing. Like a lot of the parents, especially if you're, you're a parent that never really got to play or never was part of a team or whatever, and you see your kids starting to have some success, you get excited, yeah. you know, and maybe it like sparks the, the little kid in you, so to speak. And yeah. you're like, oh, like I never got to do this. This is awesome for my kid. And whether you realize it or not, you're kind of just like jumping on the bandwagon. But it's, uh, it's something that for the parent, it's like it takes over the parent's life. No, it does. Hey, listen, um, my wife and I had to check ourselves in too because once you get involved in the AAA and all this stuff, you're spending money and all that stuff, it's, it's, it, can, it can be all you ever talk about, it, which is crazy. And uh, then when it's over, now what do you have <laughs> as, as a couple? Yeah, you know, it's crazy. But I, it really does take over your life. And I mean, it takes, it takes a lot of time to do all this kind of stuff like to travel and to take them to practice and you know you you get involved in your kid and you you want them to do you of course you want your kids to do well but it can't be i don't know if it can't be it's it just seems unreasonable to me that it, it's more important to a lot of parents than than a lot of kids and it's very apparent to me on that oh yeah because you know we, we just talked about it in our office like when you're when you're a, when you're a parent and you're always asking your kids, you need to work, or telling your kids, you need to work hard. You should have did this, should have did this, should have did this. What are you doing as a parent? Like, are you actually setting that example in everything you do? Because I, I know that most people aren't. Yeah. You know? When so. kids aren't stupid either. Yeah. Right? Like, the kids can see. Yeah. That, like, so, I mean, you're talking about kind of like the life thing. It's, if you keep telling your kid, you know, you got to do this, you got to work hard, you got to eat right, you got to do all these things, but you don't do it. Like, the kid yeah. knows. The yeah. kid sees. Yeah. I remember, I'm not that, I'm like relatively fresh out of the game and I remember, I'm not, I'm not, it wasn't that long ago and I remember that people, people's parents telling them to do this, that, whatever, or coaches barking at us to do this, that, whatever, and them not doing it as well. Yeah. Like the kids pick up on it. They can see, Yeah. you know, they can, they can totally see yeah. um, what you're doing. And then on, on top of that, like there's other things that um, the parent, like, like stuff like when they're at the game watching, they got the the video set up, right? Or talking about or talking about agents, like yeah. they need their kid to have an agent, yeah. and this kind of stuff. And like just there's a level of self awareness yeah. that is just not existing. Well, here's before we I talk about that because I actually do want to talk about the the GoPro and the agents and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. I, I, I forgot to I haven't mentioned this to you in a long time. About I'm trying to think. Uh, probably five, six, maybe eight years ago. I don't think it's eight years ago, but roughly there was a, there was a guy in town. So I um, wanted to start a hockey school. A dad wanted to start a hockey school because he thought his, he thinks his kid's really good. Mm -hmm. So he started a hockey school and then he had this idea and listen to this convinced parents to go to the hockey school and quit hockey and train at the hockey school Till they're about 17 years old. Then when they're 17 years old, they'll be ready. And I'm like, for what? Yeah. 18 years old. That's how we do it in check. And I'm like, okay. So I'm like, people aren't, there's no chance that people are listening to that. People bought it. And, and, and people thought, yeah, this is the way to go, which led me to a lot of different thought patterns. Number one, why do you play hockey? We play why, like you give me your answer. Why would you play hockey as a kid? Because it's the most fun game ever. Yeah, most fun game ever. Yeah. Well, give me another reason. As a parent, now, if I'm if I'm a parent, yeah. Oh, I you know my kid gets to be on a team and yes. he gets to figure out you know all these 
lesson life lessons from yes. you know interacting with other kids and learning how to behave and yes. learning their manners and learning how to work hard and learning how to do all these life skills or whatever keep them from stealing cars keep them from yeah, keep them hopefully the keep, yeah. keep them from snorting cocaine yeah. hopefully yeah. um keeping them with like-minded people that's why you want your son your kids to play sports so why do I want my kid to play hockey? So I'm going to ask my, I'm going to answer that question. I want my kid to play hockey because he asked me, begged me to play hockey when he was a little boy. I thought it'd be cute. I thought, and then my next question was, it'd be kind of neat to see if he had my genetics or my passion for hockey. That'd be kind of cool. Mm-hmm. And then he did. He was like all over it, loved it. Daddy, can we play hockey? I'd come home from work. He'd have his hockey equipment on and dad, single Canada. I can't sing, by the way, but we'd have to sing O Canada. Then he'd smack us. He, it was his real game when he was two years old. Skates on in the carpet, and he's playing. He loved hockey. I said, okay, that's, you let that kid go. Yeah. I would have did the same if you said he wanted to play the French horn, Yeah. <laughs> right? But that was hockey. So I want that for him. I want him to love hockey, have fun. So the, But the thing is, what did I ask you? I said, why would you want your son to play hockey? Right. You play hockey. Yeah. If you're not playing hockey and you do what this guy was doing, you're training hockey. What are you training for? So so that's sort of number one. You've taken the joy out. If you're not playing, now you're training. That is ridiculous. Number two, what are you training for? That means that as a parent, you've looked at your kid and you didn't just say, let's go play hockey and have fun. You said, oh, right? Where am I going with this? You're going to go training. You're not going to play anymore with your friends. You're going to go to this dude and train yeah. for... You, they have a goal, yeah. or else they wouldn't put them in the freaking thing, right? You yeah. have a goal of you want them to go somewhere. Well, come on, man. Yeah, come on. Yeah, it sounds like some something out of like Russia or China or something. You're you're the kids popping out of the womb, and you're you're making them into a professional athlete off the hop. True, you know? but at least in Russia and China, they identify that oh, that kid is someone that we need to get in our program. Yeah, yeah. But when you're sitting yeah. here in Windsor, Essex County. Have a population of four hundred thousand total, and you training for your kid's future in hockey. Come on, yeah. And that's what th- this is. That's one thing that I see a, a pattern of is just a ton of this kind of stuff. Is like, what are you actually thinking? Training for hockey at seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Play hockey. Yeah. Play hockey. That's what this game is about. So you've, it, it, you see where I'm going? Like, it's oh yeah. Just like it's it's absolutely ridiculous. And this is my issue with the hockey parents is. Step, t- take a look back, detach yourself and say, okay, what, what are we actually doing here? How good, how, how do you even va- uh, evaluate how good your child is? So then as it brings me to a whole, so that's a, actually a great way to talk about like the, the, the where I'm, where, where my head's at with the hockey thing, because I think if anybody just heard that, like that view that we just had, they'd say, and if they were one of them, they'd be like, Ooh, wow. I, I wasn't thinking, was I? Cause I can tell you right now, not one of those kids did one thing in hockey. Yeah. And it's not because um, that's just the thing. Most kids aren't. Yeah. But the mindset was like training for hockey every day off ice. Like, oh, we got to do this. <laughs> like, for yeah. what? It's crazy. Well, well they have, they have uh, like unrealistic expectations, right? Because it's so, like, it is so hard to make. It. And we've talked about this before, but just from my own little anecdote, I was like, one of these guys that, and I trained with you since I was a little kid, yeah. did everything right. If like you were to map out, you got to do this, you got to do this, you got to yeah. do this, you got to do this. I ticked basically all those boxes yep. on a consistent basis. Yep. And I didn't, I didn't play pro. Right. I didn't make the NHL. Right. Right. And my parents weren't crazy hockey parents that were putting me in everything. And I was coming to sessions at six in the morning and doing all this stuff and yeah. whatever. I did all the right things. Still didn't, still didn't happen for me. Yeah. Right. And I learned a bunch of other lessons that help me yeah. in life now, which yeah. is good. Yeah. But the problem that a lot of these parents have is they have these unrealistic expectations of like, my kid's going to make the NHL or whatever. And then along the way, their kid misses all of those things that you just mentioned as reasons that you play hockey, right? Yeah. You, you miss like learning how to operate as a part of a team and learning how to work yeah. hard and staying away from the crap yeah. and all these life skills that do transfer into other things. Yeah. You just miss them. Yeah. Right. And I'm, 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 you know, like, as you say that I'm, I'm not saying don't ever do anything with your kid. Like if, if, if a, if a parent was to tell me they said they want to get their nine year old private lessons twice a week so that they understand what it's like to go to bed, get up early and, and pay the price, whether you, you, you feel like it or not. Okay. Yeah. We could talk about it. We could talk. That's, that's cool. 
um, or you have to get some, you feel like you need to get some extra ice cause they really love it. They're asking, you know, you want to give them a little bit here and there. I like, I'm good with it. Like it's, it's, yeah. it's cool. And you get the appropriate trainer and all that kind of yeah. stuff. But like, but that's not usually the mindset. Right. Well, actually, it's never the mindset. It, it's disguised as the mindset sometimes, but it's not. It's about making them better. It's looking at the other kid on the team. It's like, okay, he's doing this. I got to do that. It's like a comparison thing. Yeah. So, which brings me to the next thing. It's like, I'm going to just say, I throw a couple stories here. So you mentioned the, the GoPro guy. Yeah. Wow. So Dalton came and watched Charlie once this year when he was injured. Came to a game and <laughs> I always sit at the glass at the end to stay away from people, number one. And just to watch the game. Don't need a play-by-play by anybody. Don't want to offer my opinion. Just want to watch the kids play hockey. Dalton comes in, big old boy. We're at the end, and people are, oh, excuse me, excuse me. About eight girls. No, not eight. There's probably about seven, six, seven GoPros when we're in their way. We, we've got to excuse us. We've got yeah. to get our GoPro up here to watch our kid. <laughs> my question, what, Why? Yeah, for so, what? So, okay, so now, is Andy just a jerk? Does he hate life? Is he a bad person? It's the intention again. So let's come up with some reasonable intentions why you need a GoPro. But first of all, if you want to, if you, th- okay, your perception on, sk- if you if you want your kid to go somewhere, that's rule number one. And I have a couple really good friends, but a really good friend, son was drafted and everything, and he had the GoPro, and I was like, dude, dude. And I love him. Played hockey. Mm. Dude, what are you doing? Well, it's just for him and for later in life when we want, you know, he would always be nice to watch a little bit of hockey. Is it? Why? Is that why? And so you tell me what, I'm 50 years old. If, if in, in the last 25 years, 20 years, whatever, when I was done hockey, if my mother or my dad had that and they said, hey, we'll pull up some videos of when you played hockey, I'd be like, no, you won't. I don't want to see that. Like, what is that going to do? I'm not going to sit and watch. Maybe I'll give you five minutes and say, "Oh yeah, it was a really, I was really cute and peewee." Wow. Or I don't know what it does. The kid doesn't want to do that, so that's a waste of time. There is a different intention of why you do that. So I know there's some that take their video and they send it out to colleges and try to promote it. Okay, let's, okay, fine. I'll give I'll give you that one maybe. Um, but I won't give you it actually because if you're actually a player, the college will see you. So that's yeah, they'll that's, find you hard to hide. It's a non-issue. Yeah, but what you do is like a scout walks. And this is what I do when I walk in and I see GoPro guy. I immediately think he's nuts. I, I immediately think there is a crazy hockey dad, one hundred percent. Because like they don't just do it once in a while; they do it every game, change ends, make sure they get the offensive zone. By the way, um, and they collect these videos, and I don't know what they do with them, but it's absolutely. Now I know there's some of the people who are going to sit there and say, "Well, they're just they're just collecting film of your parent of your kid." It's not a big deal. It's not. It's not if that's just the intention. I, I guess, but I know what the intentions are. It's for dad, many times to go over the game with the kid and show them exactly what they have done wrong or yeah. why they should get more ice time or how they could be better. How that kid screwed up and you should have got the ice time. Yeah, or it's. I want to get a highlight reel of my kid together so that I can post it somewhere. Yes. So that somebody can look at it. Yeah. Right. And, and this is the thing, like just being around hockey people, right? Like you just said, being around scouts and coaches and all this, that's such a red flag. It's a red flag. That is such a red flag. And the hockey, there's too many good players that even if you're good, if you got a crazy parent, they don't got time to deal with this crap. No. You know what I mean? They don't no. want to have a meeting with your dad. Like they don't want, they don't care no. about this, right? Yeah. They hear your mom screaming at the ref from the stands. Like they're asking about whose parents are whose. Like they, they're checked into this stuff, right? Brian Prout, Brian Prout, Dalton's um, cousin. Actually, he's a general man, assistant general manager of uh, Saginaw Spirit. He says he stands right across from the bench and that's he watches the kids on the bench on the reaction. If they're looking up at mom and dad, they'd figure out who the parents are because it goes a long way. Oh yeah. And Welly, you know, he coaches in Flint. He will not deal with a parent. He goes, if they if they they're legit like a lot of people don't under, actually believe it, but if you have parents that are over involved, they don't want you. No. No, they don't. You're and, not and, coaching the parents anymore. And those kids, like I remember when I was a kid, like the the people who had the crazy parents, like they're not it's not like they're they got any farther 
than in hockey. Like there's no benefit. Like there's, there's no, benefit. no benefit and it might actually hurt you. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And, and, you know, then the other thing that you just kind of touched on a little bit is these, these, uh, you know, the parents looking at, you know, which kid's doing better and like, oh, like you should have got this ice time or whatever. Then there's like, there's always a problem, right? There's yeah. always a problem yeah. with the coach. Yeah. There's yeah. always a problem with like whoever the, the, the first line is, there's always a problem with the amount of ice time. The power play isn't good. The, all this stuff, like they're playing minor hockey, man. Like the coach yeah. has a job. Like there's, yeah. there's, it's not, it's not yeah. junior hockey. And what do you know, anyways? It's just taken for to a different level, though, because like there was the one year that when we decided to bring our son to AAA, um, it was like okay, like there is a there is a bit of an expectation, and I'm going to just admit that there's an expectation, and whether this is right or wrong, that you play to develop and win a little bit. It was mine and in most people's, yeah. but people take it to extremes. So it was like at one point I was like, this is kind of dumb because no matter what, everything was fair. Like if you got a penalty and your shift was up next, you would go on. I'm not saying punish guys for penalties. It happens. But no, under any circumstances, if it was a tie game and it was a playoff game and it was we needed a goal and it was like, like say the third line, we'll call it, is up, they get up. And it's like, well, at, at that level, I, 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 I expect a little bit more. Didn't lose my mind over it, so I can understand where people can nitpick that. But it goes way, 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 way too far. Well, that's what we're talking way about. We're far. talking yeah. about the extremes, yeah. right? Like, obviously, there's something you don't want to be on the team where everything's fair all the time. No, right? No, that's not that's not beneficial either. There yeah. needs to be, you know, like inspired competition and yeah. like you're trying to work for something. And the other yeah. thing too is, it's if you're a kid on the team. And you know the guy that just went out there this isn't is going to get you the goal. Yeah, like that disrupts the team dynamic too. So that's not yeah. what we're talking about. We're talking yeah. about that that extreme yeah. level, right? Yeah, yeah. So when parents make comments like that, like because I get it all the time, like they they, oh, they yeah. it's so funny, man. At a game, when the parents come and talk to me, they give me their opinion. Like, <laughs> I I you know I'm a pretty humble guy, and I just I I don't like to flex my hockey muscles. But when people start telling me how this guy's doing well, this this coach should do this and stuff, I just go. Wow, because people don't have a clue. They think they know, but they mm. don't know, and it's uh, it's sad in a way. But it's like most parents, actually, all parents, including me, have no right to coach their kid or tell their kid what's right and wrong on that team. And I say that because I have a I have an idea what the coach wants. In fact, he tells me a lot of the things, and I run some practices for him. But nonetheless, he runs a team a certain way. He has his philosophy and he talks to them before the game and he does his X's and O's and all these different things that I'm not privy to. So when my when when I start bitching about it and complaining and pointing out things that I feel are wrong, I have no I don't have the right context. I don't I can't say for sure that my son or this guy should be going on because whatever. That's me that understands the game, coach pro coaches pros and played at the high levels. That's I can say that. When when uh Johnny Johnny boy that's uh, that's a dad that's never played the game, doesn't really understand the game, doesn't understand X's and O's, just sees goals as a good thing and nothing else, or maybe some, maybe very few things. You ha you can't comment. You have no idea. And the advice that you give your kid or the shit that you give them or whatever could be totally counter to what the coach actually wants or what the team wants. And and the other thing is is. What makes a good player? If you ask most parents, they wouldn't actually know. Score goals? Like, my wife asks me that all the time. God bless her. She doesn't, this, I'm not cutting her up. She'll say, what well, What makes him a good player, Andy? It's a legit question because she actually doesn't know. Right. She, what she thinks is a good player, she, she'll point things out, but she'll actually t she'll say, well, what, what makes him a good player? So I have to explain to her, oh, okay, that makes sense. Yeah. Well, I think there's something to be said, like I, I touched on earlier, where, like parents that don't really know the, the, the putting, you know, specifically defining what it is they don't know a lot of the times is they don't understand roles. Right. right. And this is what happens when you were, have never been part of a team or you've never played any high level where those things become relevant. Like if you played, if you played house league hockey growing up or whatever, right. Where yeah. it's just like roll the lines, everything's fun, like whatever. That's not, that's not how hockey is when you get older, right? Yeah. You start to play at higher levels and there's a game within the game kind of thing that people talk about, you yeah. know? And if you're somebody who doesn't understand that, then it's hard to, it's hard to know why people are in certain situations or what is most valuable on a team and all. Yeah. You, you can't know. It's impossible. You can't know. Yeah. Right. So I remember one, one time, uh, something that happened with me because my dad, 
he was a guy that never played any kind of high level organized hockey where he would know these things. Right. And I remember I used to come in and he used to say this to me when I was young too. I just didn't know any different. But when I got older, I started to realize he would say things like, it looks like you're standing around. Like you're not going to get the puck. Like, yeah. why aren't you going to get it? I don't understand. Right. And sometimes that was actually valid. Like maybe I was just floating and not yeah. working hard, but sometimes I'm not supposed to do that. Like it's not my job. If I'm a winger yeah. in the D zone, I can't just go get the puck. Yeah. I need to stay where yeah. I'm supposed to stay because yeah. if I leave, yeah. then that D gets the puck yeah. and then we're screwed because we're he gets a free trouble. shot. Right. Yeah. So that's something that you wouldn't know as, as a parent yeah. if you've never played. Yeah. Right. And the other thing too is not everyone's a goal scorer. No. Right. Not everyone's a goal scorer. And in fact, your kid may not be good offensively. He might be really good at something else. And because your only gauge of whether or not they're doing well is if they scored a goal, like you're, you're missing the boat, right? Yep. Your kid might be the one that the coach wants on for a penalty kill yep. or for face-offs yep. or for getting pucks out on the wall yep. or for blocking shots. And it's not less important. No, it's not less important. <laughs> it's less sexy and it's yep. less, you know, you're not going to get all the, the glory of being the guy that scored the game winning goal and whatever. Yep. But it's these are critical parts of the game, yep. right? And I, I want you to go through that one story um, – that you were telling me with your bell tire guy when the the parent was asking you why his kid wasn't uh, wasn't on the power play. Yeah, so I had uh, a really good friend. Uh, so when I was coaching bell tire in Detroit, it was uh, Major Bantam, and uh, we had a really good team, um, a stock team. Uh, basically, when I when I took the team, like a whole bunch of kids from Michigan and out of state wanted to play, so I just took the Michigan kids. Um, we had a great team. We were winning everything, and. Um, when you have a good team like that, what happens is it's hard to find power plays. Well, no, not, it's easy to find a power play, but it's hard to make everybody happy because everybody thinks that they're the best player on the team, right? Yeah. So anyways, I had this one defenseman. At the time, he was about 6'3", and this is in Major Bantam, so 14 years old. I love these kids. And he was a, he was a very good player. He plays at Harvard now, so he's a defenseman at Harvard. So he played for me. And uh, his dad and I became actually very good friends. So just a really smart businessman, really smart guy, generous guy, nice guy, intelligent, loved talking to him. We'd have a, you know, after games here and there, we'd go have a couple beers and laugh, not just talk about hockey. I learned a lot from the guy. Great. So we, we built a bit of a friendship. And, but we never, he was intelligent enough to not use our friendship. Like a lot of people, when you coach, a lot yeah, of people yeah, use yeah. the friendship as a tool yeah. to get inside information. That's not what he was yeah. doing. One day he calls me though, and um, he goes, Andy, can I ask you a question? Just as a hockey dad, just as a hockey dad, not it, whatever your answer is, is is the answer. It's it's all good. I said, yeah, for sure you can. Like you're you're my friend, and I care about your kid, right? So he goes, okay, listen, why? I'm not going to say his name. Um, he goes, why do you? I just noticed that in the last maybe little while he hasn't played power play. And I'm just curious why. So I said, Mike, you know, <laughs> that's the dad. I said it's it's a great question. I said, that's a great question. I said, uh, cool, here's your answer. You want him, He wants to move on in hockey. He goes, yes. I said, okay, so when I put him on the power play, what happens is I put him in a position where he looks uncomfortable, where he bobbles the puck. Maybe the pressure gets him or maybe it's not a comfortable situation. So when people see him in that situation, they, they notice a lot of mistakes or maybe an uncomfortableness or a um, – uh, not natural. Like yeah. it, it makes him look less than a player than uh, than he actually is. It's just not the right place for him. Would he? So when I explained to him, I said he's a big boy. He's a great hockey player. He's just not offensively. But no, but he had a great shot and stuff. But running a power play just was not his thing. Mm -hmm. He and it, he was a very intelligent kid, but it just wasn't his thing. Yeah, it was he's like not he the got, point guard. He's not the point. Just guard wasn't type. that guy. Yeah. yeah. Like and 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 he did so many other things well in a game. Yeah. And I just explained that to his dad, and I said, so when when I look at him, he's a shutdown guy. With some offensive ability, but I said, when playing at a higher level, you want him to play at a higher level? He's a shutdown guy. He's a big guy, gets pucks out, gets pucks deep, finishes guys, you know, and his number one thing is to be a good shutdown guy. It's not necessarily the most fancy thing. Use his body a little, a little bit or a lot and learn how to box out, do all the little things to make him a good player and stuff. So, but put him in that offensive situation, running a power play is not his thing. I said, Would you agree? He goes, Yeah, I think I do. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and the, the conversation was okay. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Because he, my intentions were not to make him look bad. Right. Was, my intentions were, if I, and we were such good friends that if, if he really pressed me, I'd say, yeah, I'll, I'll fire him out a couple more times yeah. and just see how he does. But he didn't go there. He just said, okay, that that's cool. That's a good answer. And you're actually helping my friend and you satisfied a question I had. Yeah. Well, and the reason that I brought that up is because here's here's a dad or 
a parent or it doesn't have to be a dad, but somebody who came to you for advice yeah, and took the advice. Yes. Right. Yes. And that's, that's the thing that you rarely see yeah. with, especially as you get to the higher levels where it gets more competitive and there's, there's more on the line or that's what the parents think. At least there's more yeah. on the line. And you know, we, people will come in the office all the time when we're sitting in there and they ask, you know, he just needs this or, you know, he's just got to do this or for some reason he can't do this. Yeah. And you'll tell them what you think. Yeah. And then they're like, yeah. No, <laughs> no. That's and, not the, what I want to hear. Yeah, they didn't. That's not what they want to hear, right? And so, you know, th- that's kind of the reason I wanted to bring that up. It's like there's there's something to be said about like, like question as a parent. You're not saying you can't question and just yeah. let your kid roam free or whatever. Yeah. And, and look for advice in, you know, places where you're going to get good quality information, which yeah. that's a whole other tangent. Yeah. But then when you get the the advice or you get the knowledge, like try to listen to it, yeah, right? It's, it's But most of the, like a lot of people want misery loves company and they want to hear, they, they're they looking for something that you can agree with and just go with their story. You know, it was funny last year, um, you know, Charlie gets a lot of points and playmaker hits. He's like a, t- a top player, right? And uh, a lot of the kids want to play on Charlie's line and I get it. And we have a great team, so it's like whatever. Like they they all kind of work together, but that one couple was he needs to play with Charlie, and the and the kid was like, "Oh, I want to play on his line, on his line, his line." So finally, he had his opportunity. Guess what? It didn't work. Yeah. So sometimes you just be careful what you ask for, because yeah. you know. And so my advice would be when you're playing, is do your job where you are. It's not someone else's job to make you better. Your job is to make other people better. That's the test of a true hockey player. Yeah. So accept your role do the best you can like i'm not saying accept if a coach doesn't have you on the power play say oh well i guess i'll just that's cool i didn't get the power that's not what i'm saying but i'm saying and i've said it to my son if you don't get a power play but you get every penalty kill you be the best penalty killer that's good yeah learn the other sides of the game like be the best at where you're at because that's just the way life is it's just yeah well and just like you have to be aware of your lack of understanding if you're, especially if you're a parent that doesn't understand, because yeah. you know you can't, you see it, you can see it in the NHL too. There's rarely there's a, a, a first line where all three guys are shooters, right? You can't, you can't. Yeah. Only yeah. one guy can shoot, yeah. right? Only one guy can shoot. So if all three guys are waiting to get teed up in the slot, yeah. who's who's got the puck? Who's, who's working in the corners? Who's, who's happy? Yeah, right. And so you know that that example you're giving, oh well, he should be playing with this player, that player, whatever. Like you don't know what's gonna work or not. No. And the coach probably tried it, or the coach probably thinks something else. Yeah. They have a game plan, and yeah. you don't know what that game plan is. Yeah, you know. And we all look at our kid. Well, if he just had that opportunity, he'd be doing better. Like, whatever. Yeah, no, for sure. <laughs> whatever. If so he's good enough. He's good enough. And so this is like the training part. I, I, I want to get to a couple of things. Unless you had a question. No, 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 okay. no. So, so the training part. What what is when does it make sense to train? Um, and and what's the intention? This is a this is a huge thing. So we're watching kids, like I I've watched um, like for example I've never put my son in a um, a spring team ever, and we get asked every year, and I say no. And people look at me like, are you crazy? Because people is it the intention again? Like, and I've always people people ask me like, what do you think of spring hockey? And I go, I, not much, but but if there's a reason that you can explain to me why you would want to do it, then like I'd, I'd be happy to hear it. So like if someone told me that, oh, their son broke his ankle last year, didn't get a lot of games and just to get him more games, I go, oh, that's a good reason. If someone told me that um, um, that they you know they didn't play a lot, that they were the kind of third line and didn't get the top playing minutes and didn't get as much ice time, so I think it's, it would be good to, for him to get more games. I'm like, okay, there's a reason. But the thing is that people think all that stuff, but they also think that people are there to promote them mm. and it's the connections and it's all the bullshit that comes along. So, and it was funny watching my son grow up because we go to these turn or tournaments and games out of town and the spring hockey people or people that train with each other, they'd meet up and they were best friends and talk about it and they knew who all the best players were supposedly, supposedly, <laughs> supposedly. <laughs> And so they'd say, oh, you got to watch this guy from this team. You got to watch this guy from me. He's really good because they played in this spring hockey stuff. Yeah. So I'd watch the game and i go, what are you talking about? 
Whereas other kids that didn't play the spring hockey, they were like, uh, you can't be very good. And it's, it was very funny. And it's the same with the training. It's like, what's the intent of this? So I watch so many people, like they bring their kids out to this camp, that camp, this, any type of ice that they can. And it's like, it's not helping them. It's just not helping them. Yeah. And it's like, again, it's the intent. What, who, who needs this training? Who's coming up with this idea? And from my, from my perspective, it's the parents. And if if a kid, if you ask, like there was a couple kids it was a few years ago, one of the dads says, Andy, I'm telling you, I'm telling you right now, if I, all he wants to do is shoot pucks. And I looked at him with my furry eyeball and I said, that's all he wants to do? Because that's, swear to God, that's all he wants to do. I said, so if you threw something at him like, hey, I'm not going to say his name, T is what it starts with. Hey, T, do you want to go to a movie tonight or do you want to shoot pucks? I'll put money on it that he wants to go to a movie yep. just this one time so parents like over put the importance on training like it's the kids but it's actually most of the oh, time yeah. it's not yeah and if they were just shooting pucks and doing things on their own it's probably better off for them anyway but there's an extreme to this i didn't know when i this has been my probably my third year I started training this kid third year that i started my business down here and then he was a he was a good player. He got drafted in the OHL to the Owen Sound Attack, and he was drafted at. Uh, I, I I gotta be careful. He was drafted mid rounds. Very good pick. Really nice pick. So, anyways, the dad the year that he was getting drafted, he wanted to come to all my things. I and he invited me over for dinner a couple of times and stuff. I'm oh, that's kind of nice because I was kind of new in the business, didn't know a lot of people in this town, and yeah, I'll come over and have a yeah. I thought everything was good. Went over to the house, had dinner or uh, yeah, barbecue and all that kind of stuff. So, anyways, as the years go on, the, his draft year, he's he's asking me questions about where he's getting drafted. Like this is early October, November. He goes, yeah, he's getting. Looks like he's a top top twenty first round guy. So I was like, not like no way, no way. I said, oh yeah, where did you get that from? So he's like, no, I got this information from you know whatever bullshit yeah, yeah. subscription yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah. God, yeah, they're, they're it's bullshit, guys. Yeah. If you pay for to find out where your kid is rated, it's not true. Yeah. It could be true because they got the right information, but it's typically not true. If you pay for things, it's not true. Um, Central scouting is the only one that knows where your kids are ranked, and then that doesn't even matter because a team has to like your kid to pick them. So if you could be rated second overall, and if the team picking second doesn't like your type of player, needs something else, he's not getting drafted second, so it's irrelevant. Yeah. This is what drives me nuts because yeah. we're going through this with my son right now. I got a call from my brother-in-law the other day saying, He's, uh, there, there was a top, whatever, Ontario kid and your son's in it. There, Charlie's in it. I was just looking him up. I said, it doesn't mean anything. He yeah. goes, no, no, it does. I said, no, no. And then I look, go down, subscribe for more. Yeah. Yeah. I said, it doesn't matter anyways, because he's, if he gets drafted first or if he gets drafted 300th, it doesn't matter. Yeah. He's got to be a player. Anyways, back to the dude telling me how high he's, uh, how high he's rated. And I said, listen, just it's early in the season. There's a long season to go. Bear with it. He's a good player, but that's things can change. So he looked at me and goes, well, you don't believe my kid? I said, no, I didn't say that at all. I told you he's a good player, blah, blah, blah. So he, he kind of was like, I don't offended? know. Offended. Yeah. Off, oh, very offended. Yeah. I didn't understand why. So as the season goes, he's g- throwing a few questions. He said, uh, "Sydney, I saw Sidney Crosby do this. Can you work on him with that? And I'm like, that's not what he needs. That's, that's yeah. nothing to do with it. Was a, it was a situation where it's a situation that Sidney reacted to and he wanted to practice this. I'm like, wow. Anyways, draft comes. This this boy gets drafted in the fifth round to Owen Sound. All right? That's a good pick. So 20 times 5 is 100. Top 100 player. 120 players in Ontario, North America. Mm. That's pretty good. So I am I get on the phone, which I do to all my kids that get drafted or scholarships or sign or whatever. I call and I said, the dad answers. So on the draft day, five minutes after the kid's drafted, who do you think I'm calling for when you yeah. see my name come up? The dad? I don't want to yeah. talk to you. Like, <laughs> seriously. Yeah. So the phone rings and he answers, hello. Like, down. So, hey, man, look, good to see you. Uh, X got drafted congratulations he goes yeah sure i'm like what i said well can i talk to to chris please yeah so hey bud uh, like congratulations he's like thanks coach like yeah i'm really happy I said, you should be man that's a, this is awesome blah 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 blah. so anyways got through that the dad calls me the next day he goes uh can we, can we uh me and my wife have a coffee with you 
I said, yeah, sure. And I could see it, sense the tone. Yeah, was like, what's weird. going Sounds on, weird. man? Yeah. I kind of knew what was like, I know he was depra- down about that because whatever. So we met at the coffee shop. We sat down, tears in his eyes, wife's crying. The dad, tears in his eyes. Oh, yeah. Oh, and wow. fuming. Fuming. And I'm like, what? He sat down he's, and he asked me what agent they needed in the beginning of the year. And I said, you don't need an agent right yeah. now. You don't need one. And he said, yeah, but, yeah, but. And he compared a couple of people. I said, but if they're not coming to you, you don't need one. Right. Right? Yeah, are you going to go pay for one? Yeah, well, you're going to go get an agent. What's a, what, yeah, Anyways, that's another day. So anyways, as we went through the story, he uh, he was they were mad at me, he said, because they they were paying me. This is what he said. He goes, we paid you to get our son to the NHL. And I was like, what? Because that didn't even come across my mind. Right. Yes, it comes across my mind that I'm good at what I do, and it comes across my mind that I take good players, and it comes across my mind that if a kid has – X, 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 that I can enhance certain things that could get them to the NHL. But I certainly would never throw out there that if you train with me, I will get you to the, NHL. the NHL. And that's what he threw on my plate. Yeah. So he invested money and time and kind of was my friend because he thought that I was going to get his son to the NHL. Yeah. And this is what I'm talking about intent. That happens a heck of a lot more than it doesn't. Oh, yeah. Well, well, and that's the that's the whole thing that we're kind of getting at here right with when you're when you're a parent and when you're you know whatever sport your kid or whatever activity your kid is in it's what is the intention behind the thing that you're doing so when you're talking about training you know and there's a way to go about being you know intelligent about how you're picking who you're going to train with and all this stuff which i'm sure you'll touch on but like why are you doing the thing that you're doing you know like what is what is the benefit what should be the benefit like if i'm a parent yes. and i put my kid in hockey the reason that i put my kid in, in hockey shouldn't be to, to go play in the NHL. That shouldn't be like objective number one, right? And the reason it shouldn't be is because it's almost certainly not going to happen. Just statistically, not likely, right? Yeah. And kind of- It's like we, putting your kid in political science because you think he's going to be the president of the United States. Oh, like- Then he should. Yeah, like literally. Just go do it. Now. Yeah. I need mean, a couple of trainers there. Exactly, right? And so, you know, you get you get into this mode where you think, okay, if I do this, this, this- if the kid's going to go to the NHL and it's like that's not why you put your kid in sports that's not why you put your kid in hockey you you put him in like we touched on before because there's all of these other things that they can learn right and that should be your intention and you know just like speaking for me personally that is exactly what happened to me out of hockey I learned all of these skills from being in this really tough competitive environment that made me ready to move on to something else and excel yeah. because I, yeah. I was paying attention and pa- like parents, they're not telling their kids this. Like you, you have to tell your kid that you, that they can learn all of these lessons if they just pay attention. Right. And you're yeah. pointing out these things that are valuable about playing hockey. That should be the intention. It shouldn't yeah. be, well, I'll go train with coach Andy because um, he trains a lot of good players and the likelihood that you go to the NHL is, is higher because you trained with coach Andy. Yeah. It's like, what are you talking about? Yeah. You know, yeah, I, I know. So, I, I mean, know. I think that's that's kind of the the big thing. Is there any other uh, is there any other tools maybe that you want to leave with for uh, for parents that they can use? Maybe like yeah. with regard to training or whatever. So, uh, t- training for hockey players is you want to be age appropriate. Number one, so you don't need to have the best trainer as a young. In fact, you don't need a trainer when you're young. So, here's the problem with hockey hockey schools and hockey training. There's a lot of fluff, and it's disguised in a whole bunch of toys on the ice that look cool. And there's no instruction, which is actually the instruction is not the important part, to be honest with you, but you're paying for it. So that's the problem. So there's a bunch of toys on the ice and you're getting a bunch of reps and, you know, okay, whatever. But it's not appropriate. So what you need to be doing at a young age is doing anything for fun. Cross ice games, scrimmages, uh, anything to do with a game situation where you're having fun and you're competing and you're touching box. Like the smaller the area, the better. That could be outside, but honestly not even structured. So people spend... 40 bucks, 20 bucks, 30, 80 bucks, and whatever it is, an hour on something that they could just get 10 events together and just do by themselves. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. So there's there's no there's no purpose to that. Now, I'm not just talking about a four-year. Like, people are complaining now because in, in Canada, Hockey Canada imposed a under-eight program where you have to do cross-ice. So I don't think they had to impose it, but they did. But it's actually better for kids. It's like if you take four-year-olds and put them on a soccer field, it doesn't make any sense. You, you, it's just lazy standing around. One guy gets the ball and goes. So, anyways, you want to get that type of thing so they have fun. Now, what age does that go to? Uh, I'd say twelve till, or uh, 
young till like 12, 13. I don't even care. Just keep doing it. Where, where you, where it makes sense to do some training is to, is number, is when you start seeing your kid, number one has a certain, he stands out a, a, a little or a lot in that, in his peer group. Okay. There's maybe there's something there. Number two, this is, this is a caveat is that when he comes home or outside of structured stuff that he's actually interested in doing it himself, meaning he grabs a stick and he tapes a stick and he's looking at a stick. He loves a stick. He watches hockey. He shoots some pucks. Maybe he's doing sit ups and push ups and he's asking questions. He's curious about hockey. He wants to get more. Maybe you throw it. Hey, would you like to do like a stick handling camp or uh, do a skating camp or something like that? They're probably going to say, yeah. And if they kind of excel at that, then maybe it's, maybe it's a little bit more appropriate now because it's a, there's a desire there to maybe yeah. get better, but there's no point in doing it. If the, if the kids doesn't yeah. have the, the kid desire. has to lead. Yeah. yeah. And if he's not, it doesn't have talent anyways, you're not going to get talent by going to a camp. Right. That's not what happens. So that's my philosophy with training. It's like, there's, there's so many people that have asked me and I said, I, I, I can't train you. I'm sorry. Like, I can't train your kid. I'm sorry. And they look at me like, yeah, but it's money. I'm like, yeah, I know it's money, but I can't take your money because it's not appropriate. Right. And they can't figure it out. It's like, if I, Spend, if you come to my camp, it's going to just be frustrating for your kid and it'll be frustrating for me. Right. There has to be a purpose. Like, what are we going to be working on? What level are we going to? And and, and, and there's that age basically starts at about 13, 14, 15, mm-hmm. where you can say, okay, like he's been working. Now I can work. We do a shooting clinic where I break down shooting and, and actually give him tools to use it, where he's going to use it, how he's going to use it, when to use it. Uh, stick handling and and tur- like all the skills, skill system and blended skills, to now make that kid that has done a lot of the the groundwork of um, of just getting good by playing the game. Now now you could work with them. It's like I always say, people come in for to our place to get uh, shooting lessons. And it drives me nuts. Like it's part of our business and stuff, but it's like <sighs> some of these kids are coming in and they we're starting from scratch. Yeah. Well, you, you can't don't raise the learn. Puck. Yeah, you don't learn how to shoot through a shooting lesson. You know how you learn is you shoot your first ten thousand bucks. I don't keep track, but I'm saying yeah. shoot, 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 yep. shoot, shoot, and when you're gonna notice that your shot's gonna get better, and if it doesn't, it's, you, you, there's no chance anyways. Yeah. But as it starts getting better, you can start tweaking it at some point. But there's literally no need for a shooting lesson. Yeah, well, now teaching zero. teaching makes sense now. That right? it makes sense. Yeah, exactly. So there's there's zero point in a shooting lesson for a young guy. You know, people say, well, if lessons are better because you learn how to shoot properly. No, no. Well, well, it goes, you, goes back to what we said. Like yeah. the kids learn by doing, right? Yeah. When you're young, you learn by doing. Yeah. You know, and you're gonna yeah. overwhelm the system. You're, they don't yeah. care. That they just want to have fun. They just want to shoot the freaking yeah. puck, man. Well, you just think about the the details that we go through to shoot a puck pro- properly. You just oh, think it's man. put the puck here, do this. It's not that. Yeah. There's hands. There's hand placement. There's how you pull a puck. What part of the stick you shoot from. What weight transfer. Those are just a few. Mm-hmm. And it goes on and on. So you start throwing that out to someone that can't lift the puck or has shot 300 pucks in their life. Guys, come on, man. Yeah. Um, so there's literally no need for it. And it's like, it's almost, it's almost counterproductive to what our business is, but it's just, it's, it's a, it's a need that are, that people want. So we, it's a service we provide, but it's not a necessary tool at all. In fact, just spend your, just spend your time at home and shoot pucks. Yep. If you can't find joy in that, you guess what you're not, you're not a hockey player. Right. That's that. Yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah, so so it's like there's a ton of money spent. It frustrates me, and I watch a whole bunch of people, a lot of people that have worked for me, thinking that oh, I, I can do that too, and they don't. They do a poor job, of um, a very poor job, and they just go through the motions and throw a bunch of toys out there and make it look like they're actually doing something when they're actually not. You can anybody can get a, a small sheet of ice, throw a bunch of toys out there, and stick handle through them, and you'll get, be as good or better. Because yeah. there's no thought to it, there's no reason, there's no purpose. Yep. So if you're going to train, that's my slogan, is train with a purpose. Like, why am I doing something? If you train with a purpose and a focus with a good teacher at a certain point, then it's beneficial. Otherwise, it's just throwing a lot of money away. And uh, might, the kid might feel good about it or whatever, but there's no benefit to it. Yeah. So. Well, I think, uh, yeah, that's 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 bang on. But I, I think before, I'll let you get the last word in here, but I think the, the one thing that I want to make sure the parents understand is kind of wrapping it up is the f- the number one is what is your intention as the parent right what is your intention and i think the big thing that that people sh- need to understand like i i talked about a little bit earlier is like put your kid in hockey for the right reason let him learn the lessons that he should learn and then 
if there's anything beyond that that comes it'll like let it happen like it'll just happen on its own but what what is your intention going in right and you need to be really self-reflective on that as a parent just to give your kid a good opportunity to make it an enjoyable experience and to let him develop the way he's going to develop right so that's number one number two talking about the training and all this stuff is as the parent ask good questions right try to figure do do your research on like what the training is that you're doing why are you doing it who's the one that's leading it and that way you're not doing what you're talking about wasting money all this all this garbage right so what what is your intention that's the first thing and then second ask good questions and and seek you know good information make sure you're informed on on how you're training your kid and why you're doing what you're doing right yeah. so you're not just wasting time and money yeah yeah and to wrap things up like it's, it's very important if you if you care if you're doing hockey for you know because actions speak people want their kids to be great hockey players apparently and that's all nice and good but unless the kid wants to be one it's not going to happen anyways so why before you spend a whole bunch of money why don't you just see if he's that guy that wants to it makes no sense my son was like i said my son if i force him into french horn i know where that's going right now (laughs) he's not going anywhere but if i keep feeding it down so he's just he doesn't have that i know that already so okay so how to how to wrap this up because i want to leave something good I guess I, the, the best way I could do it is as a, a experience as a parent, as a coach, and as a player, I know that this works. So this might be a little bit longer than I want it to be, but whatever. So number one is how do you, how do you parent a kid in hockey? So I, I never – see, there's so many ways that you can put pressure on your kid or you could uh, – um, maybe it's not pressure, but you can give mixed messages. So if, it, if my son comes off uh, off a game, which this is what I don't do, if he comes out of a game and he had a good game, and let's say in my opinion he had a good game and he scored three goals and he knocked a few guys around and blocked a shot, everything went well, and he, and he comes out and I say, that was a great game, buddy, and high five him, and he goes, okay, that's good. It seems like a good thing. What if the next game he comes out and he gets one goal, he didn't do a whole, or two goals, or three, whatever, he didn't have the same game and I didn't, or wasn't excited and I didn't give him the fist bump or whatever. What's going through his head? Oh, I didn't play good. What if he plays a bad game and I don't say anything or I do say something or I lie and I see he played a great game? Then he does, it's, it's mixed messages. So what I do with my son is I keep it for what's, what it's supposed to be. During, this, during this, the week, because I want him to do well at it, he's good at it, and I want him to, to be focused and I can help out as a dad the best that I can. So during the week, I'll for practice, say, oh, are you excited about going on the ice tomorrow for the team? Yeah, dad. That's all I need him to hear. He says, it just gets his mind, okay, you're practicing tomorrow. How was practice tonight? Oh, it was good. It was shit. Whatever. We, we'll talk about it for two seconds. Did you work hard? Yep. Good. That's all I say. Not one more thing. The game's coming up on the weekend. It's not a big game. It's never a big game because they're all big. If I make the game big for one of the Toronto Marlies tournaments, a big tournament, now it's, I'm getting in his head. It's a big tournament. I have to perform. This is big. You know, see what I mean? It's like this oh, is yeah. bigger than what it needs to be. No, it's just a hockey game. This is what the mental toughness thing is. Just the same thing you do every day. But anyways, all I say to him, no matter what game it is, I'm excited to play this week. Oh, yeah. And then I might ask him one more thing, like, oh, who's good on that team or do you think you're going to win? And I get his brain thinking about the game. That's it. Yeah. I don't say you need to do this, watch this team, blah, blah, blah. Now, we're driving to the rink, so I hope you have a great game today. I know you love it. Or, you know, have fun. Have fun. That's the pregame. When he comes out of the rink, whether he plays the best game of his life, he plays the worst game of his life, if he dogged it, whatever, he comes out and I say, did you have fun tonight? That's it. He will say, if he had a great game, he tells me all about it. If he wasn't happy with his performance, he basically says, eh. And if he dogged it, he knows. I don't have to tell him. What will happen after a day on the, on the negative side, when, when he has, a let's say, a bad game, he will explain to me what happened and why he's pissed off and what's going to be, how it could be better and stuff. I don't have to say a word. Does he ask me questions once in a while? Yes. What could I have done better? And then I have the ability to actually show him. Most parents wouldn't have that, but that's my gift to him. Yeah. Other than that, we do not talk about his game of hockey. We talk about hockey sometimes, but we do not talk about his game. It's helpful to him. The pressure's off. I'm just his dad. I can be a dad at home. I don't have to talk about hockey. I don't have to drive him nuts. It's the best way that I've seen. When I look at it as a parent, I wish, or as a kid playing hockey, I wish I had the same. When I look at it as a coach, again, it's the same thing. Take the pressure off and just, do, this is your job. No big deal. Right? Do yeah. your best. That's it. So that's the one thing that I would say is, is behavior in hockey, that would be it. Um, 
let them set their goals, let their dreams, and you know you support it along the way. So here's the other way that you can support them. This is the last thing for today. Is the big problem that is in ho- in hockey, life, sport, whatever, is kids know when they played well and when they didn't, but they want guidance. So a lot of the times, even hockey parents just do it. Their uh, hockey players that have kids do it the wrong way. You you don't want to put. You want to be able to guide them. So I've said this to all the players I have. You have to have four, three, four, five things that are something you can measure. So a lot of times your kid will walk out of the game and they thought they played a great game. And the parents will say, uh, great game, or they look at it like they didn't think he played a good game. Like it could be mixed messages. Okay. Kid might come out of the game and thought he played a terrible game. And a parent might say, hey, here's the problem. They might say, no, 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 you played great. You worked hard. You did so good out there. I love you so much. And grab the cheeks and give him a big kiss. But that's not helping the kid because he knows that he didn't play a good game. Or the other action is the dad or mom goes, yeah, well, no wonder you didn't have a good game. You haven't shot pucks in a week and you've been sitting around eating pizza and not going to bed at night and not drinking your water and you're a jerk. I hate your guts. And I spend all this money and blah, 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 blah. How does that make the kid feel? It's not his fault. He's a kid, man. Yeah. So what's, what's a strategy that actually works? you got to take emotions out of it a little bit because the kid actually wants it. And a lot of coaches are guilty of this too. Just work harder. Work harder. Be faster. you got to work on your game. You need your footwork. It's not actual advice. So what I suggest that parents, coaches, and players should do together, should have a list. It doesn't matter. It doesn't have to be right. It's just I've done this with every kid I coach. What are five things that make you a good hockey player? That, that You could say I had a good shift. You can't score every shift. You might not get the puck every shift. What are the things? So it could be, uh, so I'll just use for Charlie, for example, because he's my kid. Um, measurable things. In his own zone, he back checks hard. Okay, that's not even that measurable. But I get the puck out of my zone cleanly, meaning I don't not bobbling and I make a play when it's on the boards. That's not sexy, but it's it's a measurable thing. I make a pass every shift. I get a shot. I hit. I win. Uh, uh, I four check hard and w- whatever. So I got five measurements. I track, let's say back check, track. So he comes off a game and he goes, you know, he, he didn't get a point, let's say, and comes out and he may be a little bit down, didn't think he had his best game. Now as a parent say, well, how did you, did you did you get the, the puck out? Did you get, did you do a four check? Did you get a shot? Did you get a pass on those shifts? Yeah, I and mean, you did okay. You seem to play well. Mm-hmm. And then when you play a good game, it's those things are going to be there anyway. So it's like, yeah, you already know. The other thing on that is a kid could go to the bench in between shifts and stuff and just measure. Ugh, that was a hard shift. I didn't do much. Well, I got the puck out and I made a pass. He did two out of five. It's a measurable thing that's actually good. So if parents and coaches and kids can get on that, and just write out four or five things that are tangible. I got one kid. It's just when you get in the offensive zone, get to the blue paint because he was dangerous when he got there because he was and he wasn't doing as much. When he did it, he started having success. So you got measurable things that are good, not scoring goals. Yeah. Because that's like if if you're a pure goal scorer, but if you don't get the puck, you can't score. Yeah. So like things that make you a good player, winning faceoffs, yeah, blocking a guy like out in front. More about process than outcome, yeah. kind of thing, yeah. right? Yeah. Blocking doing the a, right things. Yeah, blocking a shot, uh, a boxing guy out as a D, making the first good first pass, not rimming the puck every time you get it. Like those things are measurable. So at the end of the day, say no, I am a good hockey player. I did these five things. Yeah. Did three of five things. Did two things. I did one thing because that's we're in the we're in the, our own end the whole time, and I did my one thing. So you, it's measurable. Now you can say, I did have a good game. Yep. Or I didn't, I sucked because I didn't do one of these things all game. My head was up my ass. Yeah. Yeah. And then but at least not, they know. But it's not like you're an asshole. Yeah. You're yeah, a stupid yeah. kid. I hate your guts. Like it's not that. It's like measurable. It's helpful. Yeah, for sure. Because so, the, the worst thing you want is like, you know, you didn't have your best game and mom gives you a big hug and tells you how awesome you did. I'm so proud of you for yeah. being a dork. Yeah. <laughs> Right. No, I so. I think I think that's good, man. I think that's uh, I'm hoping that the people that listen to this they actually do listen to it and they yeah, you know it's, digest it's it. It's actually very very valuable. Yeah, I'm really hoping that this is something that parents listen to because yeah. it'll be extremely helpful. It'll be so much more beneficial to your kid than anything that you think you're doing. Yeah, you know. So right. I think we can uh, we can leave it there. Yeah, and we'll be back on it uh, yeah. again next week. Yep. Beauty. <laughs>